Hello friends, today we are going to deal with John Galsworth's play Justice. Galsworth's play is written more than a century ago. It was performed in 1910, that is 110 years ago. But while it was performed such a long time ago, it's still relevant. It's a play that's of particular interest to Indian readers, Indian audience. For for one simple reason, it was even translated as early as 1917 by Munshi Premchand as Nyaya into Hindi. The reason, of course, when you think of it being translated at such an early stage, and Premchand had also translated Galsworthy's strife for that matter, um, because he felt that the concerns that Galsworthy had come up with in this play or universal in nature, not just limited to the England, to England, but are of concern, so they are of relevance to to Indians, not just in the present day, but even in 1917 they felt so. Now, along with this, um, this is a play that actually, Girls with His Justice, is a play that actually resulted in legal reforms, and to a certain extent prison reforms, two things that had happened. One reason, of course, is that I mean, Churchill actually attended a public viewing of this play. I mean, he attended a public performance of this play, and uh, this had led to certain reforms. Is um, something that people believe in. But one thing that people have to remember that we have to remember when we look at Galsworth is just as legal reforms or legal concerns are uh, are an abiding interest with Galsworth. Galsworthy, prior to actually turning into a writer and a dramatist, was someone who wanted to pursue the law. Uh, was someone who had studied law, and he knew the kind of problems that were there with the legal system. His novel *Forsyth Sada* is actually deals with um, similar legal concerns. His first play, *The Silver Bots*, also shows um, his his interest in crime and justice, crime and punishment. Justice is a play which de which shows a similar interest in the kind of problems that were present in the legal system in England. Now, before we go into details as to what exactly Galsworth is dealing with in this in this particular play, uh, let us quickly summarize the play. We will we'll just deal with the summary shortly. One. Hmm. Justice, Galsworth's justice shows uh, a clerk in a firm, um, Howe and Sons, in a firm, James and Howe and Sons, um, a clerk named Felder who commits an act of forgery. Now, why does Felder commit this act of forgery? Felder is someone who is in love with a girl called Ruth Hannibal. Of course, that doesn't naturally mean that he has to commit forgery, but. Ruth mm, is already married and she is in an abusive relationship. She is a victim of domestic violence. Her husband harms her on a regular basis. The question that you would naturally ask is, so why doesn't she just go to the police, complain about this case of domestic violence? In 1910, when Galsworthy was writing this play, this was not something that was possible for women of that period to do. They couldn't really go and complain about their husbands. Husbands could complain about wives, that they were denying them conjugal rights, for instance, but women did not have the option, and even if they did, people hardly believed them. They were again punished for actually complaining, so that the victim then uh, for actually complaining was viewed as a villain. This is just one of the things that was happening. Now, mm, Felder, our protagonist, William Felder, he feels sorry for Ruth and he will falls in love with her, wants to help her, wants to elope with her for that he needs money and therefore he forges. He forges a check so that, I mean, it no, uh, oh, he effectively steals 81 pounds. It, uh, he's discovered and this discovery then leads to a slight argument between father and son. Father and son here being James Howe and his son, who are 
the persons that Fowler is working for. The son believes, the junior Hope believes that uh, Fowler should be treated with mercy. He should not be punished for whatever he has done. However, his father believes that there is a legal system and they are living in a society and that society system, the judicial system, the police, whoever are involved have to actually be called in and Felder has to be punished for the crime that he has committed because they were responsible members of society. That's how James Hope views this situation. Felder is arrested and when he is is sent um, in the court of law one of the things that happens is felder when he speaks about the reason why he had committed the crime no one treats it as, as if he is he has done something that is virtuous on the other hand he is punished not only for forging but also for actually having an adulterous relationship a double punishment in one sense and Felder is, asked, is uh, sentenced to solitary confinement. He goes to prison and in prison Felder suffers a lot due to the solitary confinement and after he is released Felder finds it difficult to find a job. He goes back to James Howe and Sons and he might have actually got a job there probably. The senior clerk Coxon is quite understanding, quite considerate. He wants to help Felder. But at the same time, uh, Honeywell, Ruth Honeywell re will returns. Uh, she has been looking for Felder for some time. And it is then made clear to Felder that Ruth Honeywell, when Felder was sent to prison, had taken to prostitution to support herself. Felder is dismayed at the kind of world that he finds himself in. Furthermore, he also realizes that a detective is after him. He is again going to be arrested because he hadn't reported after being released. This results in Felder actually committing suicide. That's how the play ends with the death of Felder. Now, uh, it would have been tragic enough, jarring enough for the audience to actually see this. But Coxon also makes a statement that this death of Felder is akin to the crucifixion of Christ. He compares Felder with Jesus in that sense. Now, that's the play that as we have it. It's a, it's a, it's a tragedy. It's a social tragedy, you might call it. Now, this tragedy that um, Galswati comes up with raises certain important questions. One, what is justice? One, firstly, and as a consequence, once we start answering this question or thinking seriously about this particular question, there are others that are linked to it, such as, what is the process of justice? What is the purpose of justice? Thirdly, and along with this, along with the process of justice, the purpose of justice, you are also looking at whether justice is uniform, whether justice is democratic. These are significant questions that Galsworth is asking. And as well as universal, we look at the universal aspect as well as um, these questions of whether justice is democratic and <coughs> what Galsworthy actually means by it a bit later. But firstly, what do we mean by the term justice? Etymologically, justice mm, comes from the word just and it's speaking about things being right, correct, equal in one sense. That it should be balanced at one level. That's what justice means. So, in a court of law, when we speak of justice, we are speaking about how the crime and punishment ought to be balanced. Now, if we are saying that this is the kind of balance that Galsworth is speaking about, what are the crimes that he speaks about in this play that deserve to be punished? 
the question that we need to ask ourselves is what is crime? Any act which actually threatens the fabric of society is a crime. Legally, right? Any act that threatens the fabric of society would be a crime. It might be lying, it might be stealing, it might be any uh, any act which a state has actually spoken against earlier. So in this case of what is crime here in Galsworth is play justice, we see numerous acts which can be considered as crimes. Of course the obvious crime is this crime of forgery that Felder commits. There is also a crime that Honeywell is a, um, is a victim of domestic violence. There is a crime where <coughs> that Honeywell, Ruth Honeywell herself commits this prostitution. We also have the crime that um, committed towards the end of the play that is suicide. Now, let us take each of these crimes in order. Not in a hierarchical order, we can't really create a hierarchy of crimes here, but if we look at the last crime first, suicide. Now, it might be surprising to actually view suicide as a crime, but suicide is an act of terrorism against the state because you are seeing that this is a blatant refusal of the state. You don't want to be part of the state anymore. This what uh, suicide would imply. The second act of prostitution or and the act of domestic violence, two acts which are in one sense threatening the fabric of society because they are challenging marriage in various ways. Prostitution because you are um, sanctioning adultery or supporting adultery by prostitution which would then I mean, um, play havoc with the kind of society that you have where you have only married couples. And secondly domestic violence and there is a reason why in 1910 that the women did not really um, have the right to complain against domestic violence the reason was a simple one because no one believed that however stupidly no one believed that women would um, need the law to step in to stop to protect them from their own husbands because the husband or the wife or whoever is the perpetrator of domestic violence is always viewed as someone who was there to take care of their spouse. Now this faith comes from how societies have understood marriage where the spouse are expected to take care of their um, partners and not just take care of them. These are these were someone that I mean they in implicitly trusted him and not just the partners or the family members but the whole society implicitly trust them which is being challenged here while we speak about this um, while we say that i mean crimes cannot be viewed as hierarchical we do realize that um, the crime of forgery in that sense is not so much a crime against society as a crime against individual you are cheating at one level, an individual whom you are saying you are trying to steal from. In this case, James Howe and Sons. And the son is not really bothered by this. He wants to actually um, not <coughs> not punish Walter Halder, um, William Halder, but rather um, to help him out if he wants, and if he can. Now, while the son Walter wants to do this, it's his father who insists on the justice system having its way. We'll get back to this point a bit later as to the, what is happening between father and son here and what Galsworth is trying to convey through this. But for the moment, what you are seeing is a, a crime that's against individuals rather than, <coughs> rather than the whole society, which has been given more importance than the crimes against society in the play. This results in Galsworthy, of course, coming back to the point where he is saying it depends on how rich you are for you to actually have the have recourse to law, have recourse to justice. Because he believes that Ruth, because she is not rich enough, is does not have the support of the police or the judicial system. Whereas James Howe has the support of the judicial system and therefore he can actually 
uh, come up with this proceedings against Felder. Well, this question of democratic democracy with regard to justice in this particular matter, Galsworth is right, but we'll return to this point much later in, in our discussion. For the moment, let us look at I mean, what does the judicial system then ask it to do when we speak about how justice is something where you are required to come up with hmm, punishment which is equal to the crime that there has to be some kind of balance as we are saying if that's the case with crime and punishment and the just and the judge is someone who is an arbiter of this punishment involves not just retribution but also reformation now when I say reformation, what does it mean? The prisoner, the criminal, whoever he has been punished while he is in prison has to realize his mistake and he should be trained in such a manner that once he is released, he would not repeat that mistake. How is it possible? One way in which is possible is if the crimes that have been committed are because mm, the criminal did not have any other option mainly if it is robbery that is committed if he has whereas in this case he had forged because he needed money he would be trained so that he improves his own skills to a point where he can actually take up a job he has been given that opportunity to improve himself to a point where it is possible for him to earn legally once he is released from prison that's what um, punishment with where you are also reforming the prisoner. In this case, that doesn't happen. Felder is not reformed. Felder is not treat, taught anything. He is not trained. He comes back. In fact, worse than um, when worse than the time when compared compared to how he was before he was sent to prison. By the time he is released, he is in a far worse con condition. The other aspect here is retribution. Kant, Immanuel Kant, speaks about retribution in his essay Retributivism. One of the things Kant says in Retributivism is, is the duty of the state and not of individuals. It's not the right for end of individuals to come up with retribution as a form of justice. There's a simple reason why, why Kant says this. He believes that if individuals start taking law into their own hands if they went around seeking retribution for acts of violence it would be an extremely violent society and uh, this this kind of violence would only result in the ultimate destruction of the society that people find themselves in so the society has to appoint someone who can then be the arbiter of justice in this case the judge for this retribution and again we can we look at I mean, crime and punishment being balanced and other things now as part of this retribution that we are seeing is Felder's crime and there are two crimes on which he is being judged here that uh, are his crimes the crimes whether it is forgery or whether it is adultery that um, that he is punished for are they punished adequately is the retribution that the judge mm, punishes him with the retribution that society tries to get from Felder in balance with the kind of crimes that have committed now when Felder finds himself in the prison he realizes this is not just a solitary confinement that is in solitary confinement where he is not allowed to speak with anyone not allowed to meet anyone so that the prisoner is forced to contemplate the crime that has committed again and again to meditate on the crimes that he had committed and realize his mistakes learn from his mistakes it's not as someone is coming here and teaching him or he has been given other options or opportunities to move away from the kind of world that he was in prior to um, which had resulted in the crime rather by putting him in solitary confinement, the prisoner is forced into, into questioning himself, the kind of acts that he had performed, and so that there is this awakening that people believed would happen 
of his conscience. That's what solitary confinement, confinement would supposed to do. And Felder was punished in a like manner. And along with this, along with being performed in such a manner, along with punished in such a manner, the second thing that um, Felder um, had to face was that he was find, found himself in a prison, which is panoptican prison. Now, what's a panoptican prison? Now, this is something that Bentham, Jeremy Bentham had come up with, mm, the same person who came with utilitarianism. Now, Bentham, when he speaks about this panoptican vision, speaks about how the warden, the prison warden, would then be in a position which is godlike. This this seems interesting, right? I mean, when we say it's godlike, now godlike in the sense that the warden would know what each and every prisoner is doing at any point of time by standing in a certain position, so that he can actually pry into what their activities the whole day. He, well, this is hugely advantageous for the warden because he can see whether a prisoner is trying to escape. And what a prisoner is in uh, is ac actually doing at any given point of time, it's also something which means that the prisoners do not have any privacy, any freedom. Every single act of theirs is watched. And when you do not have privacy, one of the things that that happens to these individuals, to these prisoners, is that. The prisoners soon find themselves where their very notion of being a human is being questioned. They find like as if they are in a zoo, like animals, that people are actually staring at them, watching them all the time. And this watching of these prisoners after a point would result in the prisoners turning into something, of course, beast-like. But more, uh, but along with it, almost like savage is almost like something that is criminally insane savage is not in the sense that we are speaking about uncivilized creatures but savage is in the sense as people who would turn more bestial beast like now this aspect of um, solitary confinement along with panoptical vision was designed in such a manner that the prisoners lose whatever individuality that they possessed whatever forget about whatever goals they might have had at any point of time in their lives they are not forced to think along those lines that it is possible for them to actually lead a normal life after coming back it becomes extremely they are not really enabling them to face society again rather they are making it difficult for the prisoners these prisons are making it difficult for the prisoners to face society once they are released. This calls for prison reforms. And Galsworthy, by this depiction in the play, did result, I mean, did achieve his objective to a certain extent. Along with this, Galsworthy was also complaining about one other thing. I mean, if this is what uh, happened with his retribution aspect, part of uh, what was happening in these prisons, he is speaking about the question of the democracy or justice in democracy. This is an interesting quandary that I mean, Galsworthy um, leads us to, leads the reader to. So there's a simple reason for this. Now, while we speak about this democratic aspect of justice and whether everyone had equal recourse to justice, one view would be that Ruth's husband, Mr. Honeywell, seems to have. Uh, have the better of this because he is not punished by, by law. There is an assumption that he is rich. There is an assumption that is that he is powerful. But remember, it is an assumption. The second thing is how and sons seem to actually have access to the law which Felder is denied. Again, it is an assumption. Because Felder's crime is something that is proved. Honeywell's crime is not something that is proved. One of the things that we have to remember, which we keep forgetting. But when, but what Galsworth says, which is extremely interesting, is that justice is something that has to be tempered by love. He's speaking about the Christian pity that has to be a part of this. 
and the reason why he is speaking about Christianity and and how to be decent Christians, I mean to punish a person based on only uh, empirical evidence of the kind of crimes that has committed without taking into consideration the circumstances that have resulted in the in the committing of a particular crime. For Gals with this seems extremely unjust. He believes that justice is something that needs mercy, that has to be tempered with mercy. Now what is mercy? Mercy of course means kindness, basic definition. But along with meaning kind, kindness, it also means that the person who is the arbiter of justice has a clear-cut idea of what actually happened, of the circumstances that had present. And we, with that we actually step into troubled waters. Now the reason why we are saying this is, when we say that mercy is, is, a, is something which the justice can actually, or the judge, uh, can come up with in his various judgments such mercy when he it implies that the judge has to have ample understanding of the facts of the case the circumstance in which a crime has been committed and this I think is not something that's easily possible in in the kind of world that we find ourselves in in feudal worlds of course where a patriarch when he's actually coming up with these statements when he's coming up with these judgments for various cases he has ample understanding of what is happening in his own fiefdom in his village in in the play in his fiefdom and as he knows this the feudal lord can actually uh, temper his justice with mercy in a democratic world in a world which is not a feudal world, in the modern world, one of the problems that you have is, in the modern democratic world, the judge would not have evidence as well as knowledge of, of the circumstances. And even if he has an idea of the circumstances, then you are asking the judge to be someone who is subjective not look at justice as a formula which it is supposed to be by its very definition but rather than as a formula as something that is subjective where the judge interprets the law every single time and then looks at it this would result in giving a lot of leeway to the judge as to how he is going to come up with a punishment would have a lot of leeway, a lot of freedom to come up with various judgments and this would also result in the judge having more and more power and of course when he has more power we are also speaking about more possibility to be corrupt as Machiavelli would put it. Now this aspect of how making um, justice as something that ought to be tempered with justice tempered with mercy would result in a kind of world where the judges might be corrupt which result, which would be far worse than justice which is democratic justice which is equal justice which is formulaic that's what one of the problems that we have with girls with this ideas of what justice ought to be but along with this there's a further problem that we, we have to see here. When we speak about this formulaic nature of justice that, that you find here, it also speaks about the materialistic worlds that we are stepping into. In that sense, of course, this play is moving towards modernism. From the Victorian era, eras of, uh, we are moving to Victorian Edwardian era in literature, we are moving to moderni modernism and what we mean by this is there is something that that is almost mechanical and justice almost becomes mechanical. Justice becomes something like a juggernaut that would roll on rather than actually uh, allowing individuals to figure out what is right and what is wrong. Allowing individuals the kind of freedom where they can question various acts, think about various acts, contemplate various acts. This 
mechanical nature is something Galswati seems to have a problem with. In other words, Galswati also seems to have a problem with modernism. However, Galswati's play is not completely tragic. Of course, it's a tragic and uh, we'll get to the point where it is tragic in a minute, but mm, it's not completely hopeless. There is hope here. How do, why do we say there's hope? It's not a world where every single individual is caught up in their own worlds. It's not as if individuals show apathy to others' needs. Felder is concerned about truth. One, which is wonderful. But of course we say that Felder is a hero. Very good. But the other aspect of this is that James Howe's son, Walter Howe, actually wants to forgive William Felder and that I find as extremely surprising when I look at the play and the way it, way it goes about because it shows that the forthcoming generation for Galsworthy is one of hope, a kind of world where um, people might be more willing to forgive, taking into account. But the point here is Galsworthy shows how junior how not really having the ability to question his father not if not the ability to stand up to his father and finally agreeing to whatever his father says in that sense it becomes tragic that's why we say this, this is a tragedy not for other reasons where the other reasons being that it's a tragedy because mm, we had seen how Felder is uh, commit suicide or Felder is imprisoned or Felder is punished or Felder is forced to forge each of these is a tragic kind of incident but the most tragic of all this is that the uh, James House son does not really get his way here however while he does not manage to get his way this is something that readers as well as audience are immediately aware of that this way that uh, Walter Howe has proposed is the right way. Galsworthy managed to actually convey this to the reader as well as the audience that this is the right way to go about it, that you have to have mercy. And by coming up with this um, scenario where Halder would not have had to actually either go to prison or commit suicide or Honeywell having to turn into a prostitute, any of these things would not have happened if uh, Walter Felder had his way. And by making the reader aware of this, Galsworth is showing that I mean there is an alternative to whatever has happened in this play. And in that sense, there is a positive outcome that we do see here, as well as hope that in forthcoming generations, people might want to follow what Walter Howe fail to do something similar. That's one other thing that we need to keep in mind. This play, uh, the, the last part of this, this play is still relevant. I mean, one, of course, we spoke about how there was a Hindi version. But the second part of it, I mean, we, we are speaking about its relevance in 2020, in the 21st century. This, um, the condition in prisons, as depicted by girls, but they haven't really changed all that much. In fact, um, they have worsened in various ways. In D.B.C. Perry's um, book of a prize-winning novel, where non God little, one of uh, where uh, a prison is depicted, little goes to prison. Little finds himself in prison in the second half of the novel. And one of the things that happens when he's at prison is um, he finds himself in a similar kind of panoptican prison. Now, what do we mean by this? Not like a warden stands up out there and watches what people are doing. Not something as straight as that, but rather um, <coughs> there are CCTV cameras that are installed so that uh, the prisoners do not really have freedom to do what they are doing. They do not have any privacy. They do not. They are not allowed to have uh, keep even basic acts such as going to the toilet as 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 private. They don't. They can't keep even such acts private. And this, really suggests, is what the world is coming to. 
and it's not just the prison warden who is watching them but in fact in Paris novel it's live audience from all over the world who are watching what's happening to these prisoners if this is the kind of dystopian world that we soon find ourselves in what would happen to prisoners who are unlucky enough to be caught because that's what it it, it finally amounts to when they are caught they are, we are not really giving them that kind of recourse where they can actually improve themselves and get back into society rather we are forcing them into these kinds of confinement where they have no option but to turn either insane or into beasts and and when they get back when they are finally released into the society they find themselves find themselves in a position where they are completely incompetent to handle the pressures of society which is scary considering that most of us are suffering so confinements of various kinds these days thanks to corona one of the things that that we need to remember is this kind of confinement this kind of confinement that galsworth is speaking about here can this not just be can is not only sapping energy sapping but is also a kind of confinement that reduces humans ability to interact with others and once we remember that we probably might be able to empathize with criminals we empathize with prisoners better when we have the option rather than think of them as miscreants who have to be punished and who have to suffer punishment is not just about suffering and this becomes girls with this main message at the end of the play that a crime does not result in a person being punished in such a manner that they have the criminal has to suffer rather the purpose of any kind of punishment or justice has to be that the criminal is reformed and finds himself in a position where he would never repeat the crime not that he is forced to repeat the crime again and again and if the prisons if our justice system if the police do not really achieve this objective but rather push prisoners in a manner push criminals in a manner where they are forced to repeat these crimes again and again that is tragic this is the real tragedy of the world that we find ourselves in that we find our uh, find th- these prisoners find themselves in a kind of loop where they keep repeating the crime find themselves in prison more to are uh, released and then repeat the crimes to break the loop there has to be not necessarily mercy but empathy that which galsworth seems to suggest it's not just mercy that he's speaking about because mercy would mean a kind of world which is not really democratic because mercy would suggest there is a hierarchical system that someone is patronizing someone is actually supporting you that's why we said that mercy is something that's possible only in a feudal world but in a democratic world the thing that we would need with justice would be something more akin to empathy is that possible would judges be more uh, able to actually empathize with criminals would the police as well as the public be able to empathize with them of course girls with their shown as the way with the character well to how as to how to empathize with whatever someone had done felder himself is able to empathize with ruth and that's why he wants to help her the method that he chooses that he chooses is wrong but it's not as if the reason why he does it is wrong felder by forging has committed a crime that's that shows him as an idiot as someone who is not sensible enough rather than as a person who is um who's evil per se 
so he needed reformation he needed training where he would be better he comes across as a person who is silly and who needed to be educated not someone who needed to be punished if the judge realized this just like walter how realized it and was able to empathize with what felder was feeling such tragedies would not repeat that's what galsworth is saying thank you